no, no, no. Isn't that a noise outside? No, it's a horse and carriage. <laughs> Rather than that. Look, I recognize it. It's Lady Constance to cover that. That's the horse. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Inside. Sure enough, Lady Constance took off the horse's skin and revealed herself. <laughs> She went into the house and mounted the stairs. You pretty giddy upstairs! Soon she reached the office door and strode through it. <laughs> Mr. Gray ran forward and gave her a chair. Hooray! <laughs> Thank you! Oh, I expect you know what brought me here. A horse and carriage. Horse and carriage. <laughs> right, now, do you deal with ghosts? We do that. Do that. Then I have a job for you. A pleasure to serve you. Pleasure to serve you. A great <laughs> honor. Great, great honor. honor. Anything you ask. How much? Shut up, Wes. <laughs> Sorry, madam. All right, love. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I am. <laughs> yeah. I have just acquired a decrepit manner. I thought you always had it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the place is haunted. I want you to de haunt it. Come down this weekend. I'm having a housewarming. Bring your own fire. <laughs> So Grey and Wet went to face a terrifying unknown. They set off with a will. To my sister I leave twelve <laughs> Soon they were groping their way up the drive of objectionable manner. Then Grey heard a footfall. Oh. Oh, my foot's dropped off. But at last, at last, they saw ahead of them the crumbling old ruin. It was Grimbling. <laughs> Lady Constance's old butler. Yes. He stood at the door to meet them and they walked towards an open fire. Open fire! <laughs> Gentlemen. Very little, I should think of you. <laughs> At your age, certainly. <laughs> Lady Constance sent for us to deal with a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? I've just read the next joke. <laughs> oh, so you come to die. What? Instead of tomorrow. <laughs> Wasn't I? But tell old. us, old man, do you think this place is really haunted? Oh, I wouldn't say that, sir. Oh, Otherwise, the ghosts would get me. Ghosts? Oh, no, I mean vampires. Vampire? No, I mean mice. Mice? Yes. With big bulging eyes and terrible fangs. With heads tucked underneath their arms. And you can hear them at night when they open their horrible jaws. And they go! <laughs> well, anyway, you'd better show us to our rooms. Certainly. You'll not be staying long. Well, we don't know. You'll not be staying long. <laughs> so Grimbling conducted them round the house. <laughs> I say, that's pretty. What are those? Those are the maids' quarters. Lovely. Mm. <laughs> anyway, here we are. Is this where we're staying? Yes, you're sweet, sir. Well, you're rather wonderful yourself. <laughs> And so they thanked Grimbling and tipped him downstairs. <laughs> that evening they dressed for dinner. Do you like my vinegar? Oh, yes. Is my, is my cabbage straight? Yes. <laughs> Pass some my collies, would you? I beg your pudding. <laughs> and at nine o'clock they went downstairs for a hearty meal of roast beef, little knowing what was to follow. Jam roll and custard. <laughs> and so the meal began. Everything seemed normal enough, but Wet felt strangely nervous. However, he tried not to show it and continued calmly stuffing spring onions up his nose. <laughs> no one spoke as they worked their way through the braised radishes, till suddenly a hideous sound rent the air. Beg your pardon. Was that your stomach, Sir Vile? Yes, things that go burp in the night. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we're here to lay the ghost. Tell us what's been happening. Very well. Call my daughter. At that moment, the door opened, and there stood Grimbling with a vision of loveliness on his arm. Oh, what super cufflinks. <laughs> and with him, Lady Constance's only daughter. She was beautiful, like an elf, with big, pointed ears. 
Wet stepped forward and bowed low. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he could hardly conceal his passion. He... <laughs> couldn't take his eyes off her. His eyelashes were caught in her shoelace. <laughs> this is my daughter, Fiona. Tell them how it happened last Wednesday night. Well, it wasn't much different from any other, really. No! No, after that, dear. No. Oh. Well, last Wednesday night, about 12 o'clock, as I was all alone in my room, by my bedside, I saw a strange man. Did he do anything? No. He was a strange man. <laughs> The next night he was there again. He looked so lonely. But I hid under the bedclothes. Yes. And he turned sadly and disappeared. Oh. The next night yes. he was on his knees as if pleading. Yes. Asking, asking. Yes, yes. This time I hid under the bedclothes. Yes. And he turned sadly and disappeared. No. The next night yes. it happened again. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but what does he want with her? <laughs> now, come on. <laughs> Which of you brave men is going to stay with me tonight? Me, me, me. Three of you. Well, in that case, I'd better sleep in Mother's room. Oh, no, no. <laughs> So they all three crept upstairs to Fiona's room and sprang into bed. <laughs> Soon the house fell silent. Silent. Only the wind was moaning in the chimney. <laughs> then... As they lay there in the dark, they heard a clock strike. Right, all that. <laughs> Quiet! The clock's striking! Yes, it is rather lovely, isn't it? <laughs> but at that moment, Wet's heart was in his mouth. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Grimbling's hair stood on end to get a better view. Okay. <laughs> look, look, hideous creature, look at those bulging eyes, that wild, straggling hair, and those two horrid, sharp teeth sticking out. I am a ghost. I mean a ghost. <laughs> I've come to hint you. <laughs> I forgot my lines. It can be believable. How could anybody be so bad? <laughs> oh, come on, give us a chance. Be frightened. No. Look, we're here to lay you. Oh, no, no, I've only just started. But you've been frightening Miss Fiona. No, it wasn't me, it was him. Who? Oh, follow me. <laughs> the apparition led them down beneath the house till they came to the cellar door. Like all ghosts, he didn't bother to open it. <laughs> they crept into the crypt, creeped forward, and there in the shadows, they saw a crabbed old figure crouching over a crucible. Oh, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the home of the vampire. The what? what? Vampire, vampire. Stick it up your... <laughs> Now you are in my power. No, this is the end of your evil. Grimbling, run upstairs and tell Fiona and Constance we've come down. Fiona, Constance, they've come down. Oh, well, sorry, I didn't... <laughs> what? What is going on here? Welcome to my den. Henry, my husband. <laughs> Now you shall feel the kiss of the vampire. Oh, after all these years. Ah! Oh, 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 oh. Shut up. Sorry, I spooked out of turn. Oh, 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 who is this brute? I made him. Oh, could you make one for me, too? Oh, no, no, you shall all be sacrificed right here. He's mad. Don't say that. Why not? It's my line. Oh. Oh, he's mad. Mad, am I? I'm not mad. <laughs> Don't say I'm mad. Don't ever tell me I'm mad. I'm not mad. Hey! <laughs> 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 I am mad. 
Seizing his opportunity, Mr. Gray leapt forward and killed the monster in the only way possible, by driving a pork chop through his heart. Should be a, should be a steak. At ten and six a pound? Oh. So that ends our ghost story.